In this video we're going to be comparing negatives with an inequality. So uh, examples one are going to look like this. Uh, okay. The second examples will look like this. Absolute values. The third examples will look at some fractions. Okay. So I'll start with the first type of, of numbers. Ignore the squiggly lines. I'm just trying to separate them to give you lots of examples. But uh, we'll look at negative 3 and 8. Just look at those two numbers to begin with. Okay, we're going to start there. Which is greater, which is lesser? And we've got to use a inequality sign as well, right? So a quick note on the inequality sign um, before we begin. Okay, so the first sign that ever came along was the equal sign. Okay. Uh, to compare two numbers, okay, and the equal sign used to be m way longer than it is now. It used to be more like that, and the idea was it, if you have two lines that are parallel, that kind of it's a good symbol for equality. You know, these these two quantities are equal, right? But um, the inequality sign came next, and it was actually it was actually made from the equal sign uh, back in the 1700s, I think. And w what they did was they took the two parallel lines for the equals, and they just went like that, right? And then that that was the inequality sign, okay? The uh, uh, or, or they could go the other way, like that, right? Now the point is that. Um, Obviously, if you have 5, that's equal to 2 plus 3, right? So that's equals. Now, inequality is when you have two quantities that are not equal. So, you know, 4 is obviously less than, um, you know, 6. So th those signs are not equal. So you take your two parallel lines, you see, so they're not equal and you make a gap and a point. Now the gap, a gap, you see this gap, that's larger than that point, you see, and that's how you make your inequality, right? Because 4 is less than 6, right? See, the, the point is beside the small number, the gap is beside the big number, right? Or you could uh, take these two numbers, um, here's 10 over here and here's 3 over here, okay? They're not equal, but which one should get the gap, which one should get the point? Okay, the small number gets the point, the big number gets the gap, right? And so, and because, see, a, a gap is bigger than a point. Okay, so that, that's how these things were created. Okay, so you, you start with an equal sign, and then you say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press one of the sides, because this is smaller, so I'll give him a little point, and I'll give him a gap. See, the gap is bigger than the point. See, 10 is bigger than 3, right? Greater than, okay? So there's our inequality signs, less than, greater than, right? You've seen those before. But anyway, back to the negative, in the negative numbers. If you have negative 3 and a positive 8, a negative 3 and a positive 8, which is greater, which is lesser? That's a good way of thinking. Which is lesser? Well, if you look at a number line, negative 3 is here. See, it's to the left of positive 8. So the greater number is always to the right the lesser numbers to the left. So this is lesser. So that gets the point and this guy gets the gap. See? And that's the sign we use. Negative 3 is less than 8. What about these guys? 5 and negative 2. Compare those. Okay, so the negative 2 again is on the left. The positive 5 is all the way over here. Okay, so negative 2 is lesser. So he gets the point and he gets the gap, right? The lesser number gets the point, the bigger number gets the gap. 5 is greater than negative 2, right? What about these guys? Negative 3 and negative 8. Which is greater, which is lesser? So you find them on a number line. Negative 3 is located here. See them? That's negative 3. Where is negative 8? Negative 8 is located here, right? See, negative 8. 8 is more to the left, see, than negative 3. And also you think, well, um, that's a colder, that's a colder temperature, isn't that negative 8? So that's lesser. Um, this is more in debt, negative 8. If you're in debt by $8, that's worse than being in debt by $3, right? So it's lesser. So negative 8 is lesser. It's a smaller number. It's, well, small is a silly word to use. It's a lesser number. A negative 3 is a greater number, right? 
So negative 8 is lesser, so it gets the point. So negative 3 is in fact greater than negative 8. How about these guys? Negative 5 and negative 1. Which is lesser, which is greater? Again, if you look at the number line, here's negative 1. Where's negative 5? Negative 5 is there, right? Which is greater, which is lesser? So the negative 5 is to the left of negative 1, isn't it? So that's how you could say it's lesser. Also, if the temperature outside was negative 5 degrees, that would be a lower temperature, right? A lesser temperature than negative 1, wouldn't it? If you were in debt by $5, that would be uh, worse than in debt by $1. So negative 5 is lesser. So negative 5 gets the point. Negative 1 gets the big gap, right? So go ahead and uh, try these yourself. Negative 10, compare that to negative 4, and then compare negative 2 to negative 6. Press pause if you need uh, some time. So compare these, compare negative 10 and negative 4, and then compare negative 2 and negative 6. I'll do it now. So negative 10 is lesser than negative 4. It's all the way over there, negative 10. Negative 6 is lesser than negative 2. Or negative 2 is further to the right. Okay, so that that gets that inequality sign, right? Okay, second example. If I can find my thing. Here we go. Okay, second example. So if we have absolute value signs, how do we deal with that? Well, um, Let's start with these two. Absolute value of negative 7 is what? The absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. Now if we look over here, this is negative absolute value of negative 2. Okay. So let's first of all calculate the absolute value of negative 2 and just write down what that is. Write it down. What is the absolute value of negative 2? So you've got to calculate the absolute value first. And remember, that's not the same thing as negative parenthesis negative 2. We explored that in the last video. This is different. This is the opposite of the opposite. That would, in fact, be positive 2. Different thing. But absolute, so, so this is the opposite of the absolute value of negative 2, right? Anyway, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And what do you do with this negative sign here? You just leave it there. So this guy becomes simply negative 2, right? Now which is greater, which is lesser? Use an inequality sign between these two numbers. 7 is greater, right, than negative 2, right? And that's the answer. 7 is greater than negative 2. Right? Okay, let's try this one here. You've got a negative absolute value of negative 4, and then you've got an opposite of the absolute value of negative 10. Okay? So, the absolute value of negative 4 is what? Absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. Okay? Now, this is the opposite of the absolute value of negative 10. What is the absolute value of negative 10? Absolute value of negative 10 is, write it down, positive 10. What do you do with this subtract sign here, the negative sign? Well, you haven't used it, just put it down there. So this whole thing becomes negative 10. Which is greater, which is lesser? 4 is greater than negative 10, right? Now press pause and do, these, do this one yourself. Which is greater or lesser here between negative absolute value of negative 5 and negative absolute value of negative 8? So I hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. The absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5 and this negative sign stays there. I calculate the absolute value of negative 8 and I get positive 8, and this negative sign stays here. Okay, Which is lesser, which is greater? 
This is more to the left on the number line. This is more to the right. Okay. So once again, negative 5 is here. That's negative 5. But negative 8 is even more to the left. Negative 8 is over here. So negative 8 is lesser. So he gets the point, he gets the gap. So negative 5 is greater than negative 8. Now, on to the third examples with fractions in them. So we might need the number line. Let me leave that there. Okay. So we'll compare negative. 8 ninths and negative 1 ninth. Okay. How do we compare those? Well, let's just, I'm just going to do a quick sketch of a number line. Okay, here's 0, and all the way over here is negative 1. Okay, now ne negative 9 ninths, you see 9 ninths is 1, so that's negative 9 ninths, right? Okay, now on the number line, where would 8 ninths be and where would nine, 1 ninth be, right? See, negative 8 ninths, that would be close to 9 ninths, or negative 1. So that would be over here, right? And where would negative 1 ninth be? Well, that would be just a little bit below 0. That would be about here, wouldn't it? So negative 1 ninth would be about there, right? So which is less or which is greater? See, this is more to the left, isn't it? Negative 8 ninths. So that's lesser. And this one is greater, right? Okay. If you have these guys, you might want to first turn them into mixed numbers and then compare, right? So what's negative 5 over 2 as a mixed number? It is negative. What's 2 into 5? 2 into 5 goes twice remainder 1. So negative 2 and a half, right? How about this? Negative six fourths. Can you simplify that? Oops, sorry. Can you simplify six, negative six fourths? Well, two goes into the top and bottom. Two and two, three, uh, six goes three times. Two into four goes twice. So this is negative three over two, isn't it? And rewrite that as a mixed number. Two and three goes one time remainder one, one and a half. So we have negative one and a half here and negative two and a half here. Which is lesser, which is greater? So negative two and a half would be more in debt than negative one and a half. Negative two and a half degrees Fahrenheit would be colder than negative one and a half. So this is a lesser one, right? That would be more to the left on the number line. And this is greater, right? So negative two and a half is less than negative one and a half, right? Now press pause on the video and do figure this out yourself. You're going to first have to simplify the fractions, put them in lowest terms, write them as mixed numbers, and then use an inequality sign to decide which one is greater, which one is lesser. Okay? So press pause on the video and do that. Okay, I hope you've tried it. I'm going to do it now. I hope you press pause and tried it. So, I'm going to put in lowest terms. 2 into 4 goes twice. 2 into 10 goes 5 times. That gives me negative 5 over 2. 2 into 5 goes twice. Remainder 1. So this is negative 2 and a half. Again. 2 into 6 goes 3 times. 2 to 14 goes 7 times. This becomes negative 7 thirds. 3 into 7 goes twice. Remainder 1. 1 third. And it's a negative. So this is negative 2 and 1 third. This is negative 2 and a half. Which would be a lower temperature? Negative 2 and a half degrees Fahrenheit or negative 2 and a third degrees Fahrenheit? Well, this one would be a lower temperature, wouldn't it? Which would be more in debt if you owed two and a half million dollars or if you owed two and a third million dollars? 
If you owe two and a half million dollars, you'd be more in debt than here. So that's less than that, right? And if you had a number line, here's negative three, here's negative two, negative one, and so on, and the number line, negative two and a half would be right about there, wouldn't it? But negative two and a third, negative two and a third wouldn't be quite as far to the left as negative two and a half. It'd be about, be about here, right? So negative two and a third would be to the right, okay? So here's your negative two and a half. Here's your negative two and a third, right? So negative two and a half is to the left. That makes it lesser, right?